Shall we lift up our two hands to heaven, everyone here? Lift up your two hands to heaven because your crown is waiting. Your crown is waiting. Your crown is waiting. Now, give him thanks. Give him thanks for answered prayers tonight. Give him thanks for testimonies we heard. Give him thanks for the inspiration we received from that clip. Give him thanks. Give him thanks. Celebrate him. Magnify him. In the precious name of Jesus, we have given thanks. In the name of the Lord Jesus, we have given thanks. I'd like you to ask the Lord tonight, give me a lifetime encounter with your word tonight. Let it be a lifetime breakthrough insight. Let your word tonight come down to me as a lifetime breakthrough insight. Go ahead and pray. There are things you hear that drives you for a year. Others you hear drives you for two years. Some other things you hear drives you for ten years. Some other things you hear drive you for a lifetime. Lord, cause my ears to hear a word that would drive me moving from one realm of glory to another all through the days of my life. Now pray. Now pray. Now pray. Now pray. Open my eyes, Lord, to that world that would drive me all my lifetime moving from one realm of glory to another. I await your word tonight. Speak your word to my heart. And take all the glory. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Lord Jesus, honor your word in our lives tonight and grant each one of us our heart's desire. Amen. Let the word that is you send them forth to everyone today empower us all through life. Amen. In Jesus precious name. Amen. It's my new dawn era. Give the Lord a big hand of praise and please you may be seated. Unveiling the wonders in the world. God's word is pregnant with wonders and it's by our obedience of faith that we can draw on the wonder virtues in the world. Get thee out of thy country and into the land I'm, I'm going to make you great. And thy name great and thou shalt be a blessing. And so Abraham departed. There is no way to connect with the virtues of that world without his act of obedience of faith. Now, fill the water pots with water. And that's Jesus speaking. And he's the living word of God. And they did. Now, take a cup full of it and take it to the governor of the feast. And they did. And behold, the water has been turned to the sweetest wine ever seen. The wonder virtue of that word came by their act of obedience. Now, go to the pool called Siloam and wash. And the man that was born blind went and washed and came back saying, John 9, 1 to 8, verse 7 in particular. It is our obedience that activates the world to release its wonder virtues. So it's not what we know that matters therefore, but what we do with what we know. 
what we know is powerless on his own and until we do what we must do with what we know it does not unleash its wonders You have to stay doing it till it delivers. And you keep doing it so you can keep delivering. This year makes it 41 years I've been following Kenneth Copeland. 1977. We had the first opportunity to sit together 30 years after. Praise God. Amen. Even after getting what I knew he carried, I kept going. So I can keep increasing, innit? I ran into Egan 42 years ago. He's going to be with the Lord now. And I kept following until the man to drop. And after the man to drop, I had to keep following for the man to keep walking. That's why so many people are frustrated in the body of Christ. It's hit and run. What the miracle papa pray for me? Well, and then got the miracle, and suddenly it's turned to an obstacle over time. And say, I bind you, Satan. No, no, no. There's a problem somewhere. Thirty-five years ago, the Lord said to me, "Send for my servant Adiboye, who having laid hands on you, shall be filled with your wisdom." Now, now that hand was laid a long time. <laughs> Why are we still on? Why am I still on? Following to keep that flow flowing. <laughs> hey, that's life. So whatever God says here, God is wonders. If we keep doing it, the wonder won't stop dropping. The wonders will stop manifesting. The key is not just obedience, but sustainable obedience. We need to engage in sustainable obedience. Somebody's been in the covenant work with God in his finances, and then suddenly a door opens, and he says, oh my God, that's what I've been looking for. <laughs> now that the door has opened, God, bye-bye. See you another time. He said, you will soon come. I know you will soon come. <laughs> I know that I know you will come with fastings. <laughs> you come with prayers. You come with cry. <laughs> what happened to me? He said, You happened to you. <laughs> you know, the man John um, J.C. Penny was an addicted title taught by the mother. And then business began to grow and blossom. He said, God, the title of this prophet looks too much. You two should know. I'm not the only one in church. If I give all this title, what will the other people give? He started cutting down on his title, and God was cutting down on his business. Not the devil. God was cutting down on his business. It was going down, 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 out. He went bankrupt. From a height of blossoming engagement, Oh God, God of Abraham, God of Sarah, God of Jacob, God of Abel. <laughs> and God said, remember where you are fallen. And so he began from his done and out status to tight his way out of crisis. Came back on the platform and once beaten, twice shy. Sustainable obedience is a fundamental covenant requirement for the wonders in the world to be unleashed in your, in your life and to keep on being unleashed as it is. What a good God we serve. Thank you, Jesus. So it's all about obedience. I mean, no matter how much revelation and how much anointing is on your life and my life, Outside obedience, they have no value. 
for obedience is better than sacrifice and to hearken than the fat of rams. There can be no substitute for obedience in our work with God. There can be no substitute for obedience in our work with God. I was in a meeting preaching 1979 and in those days because people are not many so when you finish preaching they ask questions how many remember those days they ask questions so one person stood up and said sir what is the meaning of Isaiah 66 verse 2 or verse 3 now let's go to it he said he that killeth an ox is as if he slew a man and he that sacrifices a lamb as he cut off a dog's neck. He that offered oblation as if he offered swine's blood. He that burned incense as if he blessed an idol. Yea, they have chosen their own ways and they are so delighted in their abominations. I said, now, go to verse 1. <laughs> you can't understand verse 3 except to start from verse 1. Go to verse 1. Now, let's see verse 1. Thus said the Lord, the heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool. And where is the house that he built for me, unto me? And where is the place of my, re my rest? So don't try to bribe me by your giving. For all these things have my hand made, and all these things have been, said the Lord. But to this man when I look, even to him that is poor and of a contract heart, who trembleth at my word. I say, God is saying in that verse that there is nothing you do that can be a for your obedience to my commandment. You can kill your son, your first son. It don't matter. Your disobedience, we can't against you any day, any time, anywhere. You understand this? Yeah. Praise the Lord. We all understand it together. <laughs> Praise God. Anytime you jump at a verse and it's not opening up, start from where it began from. Now, if you can't get it, because the breaking of the chapters is just for convenience of reading, go to the next chapter. You can't understand, for instance, Malachi chapter 4, verse 1, except you understand Malachi chapter 3 and verse 6 to 18. You can't understand what they say. Jesus was obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore, God has also highly exalted him. Obedience is, a, is the key to experiencing the wonders in the world. It is by obedience we taste how good and sweet the word of the Lord is. That's so important. Every commandment we only deliver is profit by our obedience. Every commandment we only deliver is profit by our obedience. We only deliver is profit by our obedience. Now you cannot steal and not be under a curse. So why try? But the curse of the Lord is in the house of the thief and the scriptures cannot be broken. You can't ignore the law of Titan and expect that 100 days of prayer and fasting will open the heaven. No. They are two different things. Every time you listen to the word, look out for what instructions God's word is pushing out to change your position. Remember, the word of the Lord is 75% of instructions and 25% of principles. Now people jump about with principles. But your making and my making is in our adherence to the instructions. Second Timothy chapter 3 verse 16 and 17. The word says, All scriptures give my inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction. So the last three all have to do with instruction. 
No, that's not the way to go. Reprove. Now, this is what way to go? Correction. And this is the only way you can do it. Your opinion is irrelevant. Instruction. So, no matter how much of the principles you score, it won't, still be, a pass mark. It won't be a pass mark. <laughs> the main domain is the instructions. May we all receive fresh grace today to embrace every instruction of scriptures as treasures of life. May we receive that grace today. Can I hear your loudest amen? If you watch Abraham's story, get there to their country and so Abraham departed. Genesis 12 and verse 4. And so Abraham departed. As the Lord has spoken unto him. Abraham wasn't praying. He wasn't fasting. He wasn't shaking his head. Abraham departed. Now, circumcised of the firstborn in your house. As soon as God left off speaking, Abraham rose up and began to cut off the first king of all the male born in his house. As soon as God went off from Abraham, he began. Now, take that son, I only sunrise it. I'm sacrificing unto me as a bond offering upon one of the mountains I'll show you. And the Bible said, and Abraham rose up early in the morning. He told him in the night. He rose up early in the morning. May we all receive today the grace for prompt obedience. Prompt obedience. It's not just obedience. Every instruction knocks on the door of your heart. Say, are you interested in a change of position? This is the instruction for the hour that will guarantee your change of position. He said, behold, I stand. Who is standing? Jesus. Who is Jesus? The word of God. What is the word of God? 75% instruction. I stand at the door of your heart and knock. If you open up, I'll come in. You don't open up, I pass over. And we saw that gruesome experience in Songs of Solomon chapter 1 and verse 1 to 10. How the beloved came knocking on the door and the woman inside said, no, 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 I've put up my dress. I've uh, put on my pyjamas or pyjama woman. <laughs> I was having all kinds of ceremony. The beloved put his finger through the hole. Say, that's bye bye, bye bye, bye bye. You are not interested. I'm gone somewhere else. By the time he opened the door, his beloved has gone. Then he went to town. Who has said my beloved? The God. You know me, God. <laughs> OPC. They caught her, removed the veil from her face, and beat her thoroughly. Who is your beloved? Delayed response. No one will suffer the plagues of delayed response. Every time God's word comes down, is to establish your victory for the hour. Grab it. Wrong with it. I was a public follower of all the prophets God sent me to. I didn't look like them in any way. But I know I'm going there. I know that I'm going. So I kept going and going and going until I started getting there. Nothing will cause you to turn your back on God's instructions. Settle. Today we're looking at the wonders of bold speaking. How to engage bold speaking to unleash the wonders in the world. In Psalm 1 and verse 10 to 14, 
I am the Lord thy God, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt. Open thy mouth wide, and I will fill it. But my people will not hearken to my voice, and Israel will none of mine. So I gave them up unto their own hearts loss, and they walked in their own counsel. Oh, that my people had hearkened unto me, and Israel had walked in my ways. I should soon have subdued their enemies and turned my hand against their adversaries. Open your mouth wide, and I will subdue your enemies under your feet as I turn my hand against your adversaries. So we are talking about the wonders of bold speaking and unleashing the wonders in the world. Bold speaking. Whatever you are ashamed to say boldly, God will never confirm openly. If you are ashamed of me and of my word, I'll be ashamed of you. Mark chapter 8 and verse 38. Whatever we are ashamed to say boldly, God will be ashamed to confirm openly. Faith is dormant. It takes our declaration for faith to deliver. Even salvation, with the heart we believe on righteousness, with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. You cannot be saved without a declaration of your faith in the Savior. You cannot. And we have in the same spirit of faith, 2 Corinthians 4, 13, as it's written, I believed and therefore have I spoken. We also believe and therefore speak. So, the mouth must be engaged for the wonders in the world to be unleashed. Our mouth is a very powerful weapon of war. Behold, I give you a mouth and wisdom that none of your can resist, nor gain say. Our victory is in our mouth. Our victory resides in our tongue. The law of bold speaking has no substitute for anyone that must command the supernatural. The law of bold speaking has no substitute for anyone that must command the supernatural. And there they were speaking boldly in the Lord, Acts 14 3, which gave testimony to the word of his grace and granted signs and wonders to be done by their hands. They were not just speaking, they were speaking boldly. My friend, you don't have high blood pressure. I said, Not me. Not me. Check it, not necessary. I can't have. And so it went back to where it came from. Bold speaking. My BP has never risen once. Except that the devil came to try whether I will receive it. Every sickness knocks on your door to ask whether you are available. But if you are spiritually up to date and your faith is on key, there is a spontaneous reaction. What do I call it? Spontaneous. You are not going home to go and, to go and plan. It's in you. There is a spontaneous reaction that silences the enemy and causes God to turn his hand against your adversaries. The devil knows I can't handle this kind of assignment that God has for me. With high blood pressure. No, it must be normal, properly normal, continuously normal. Because of the demand of the call. Satan said, Look, if I, if I let this boy go, I'll be in trouble. Knock his body with high blood pressure. I never 
took one medication. It ended there at the sound of the command of faith. Better open your mouth wide. I remember when my wife said, oh, I came out from a trip. He said, I had miscarriage. No, it cannot happen. Can I have my food, please? I never prayed once on it. I was saying no on the authority of my privilege inside. Silence the devil. When you say no and you won't doubt in your heart, the mountain was clear. In your tongue lies your victory. You shall have whatsoever you say. The word we speak is empowered to create its content. Genesis 1, 1 to 31, and God said, and God saw, and God said, and God saw, and verse 31, and God saw everything that he made by speaking them, and behold, it was very good. How? In Luke chapter 8, verse 11, he said, Now the parable is this. The seed is the word of God. What you say is what you create. But the bold that we speak, the greater command we gain over all opposing forces. Psalm 81, I mean Psalm 18, numbers 44 and 45. He said, as soon as they hear of me, they shall obey me. The strangers shall submit themselves unto me. He said, the strangers shall fade away and be afraid out of their close places. As soon as they hear, not until they hear. As soon as they hear of me, they shall obey me. The stranger shall submit themselves to me. They shall fade away from the hiding places. It's time to open fire. In this breakthrough service, I will let you open fire based on the authority of the word for your rescue. For your rescue. For your rescue. He said, open your mouth. Why? And I will feel it. If you will do this, I should soon subdue your enemies under your feet and turn my hand against your adversaries tonight. Whatever won't let you go by your bold declarations of faith, God will turn his hand against them. He will subdue them under your feet. He will subdue them under your feet. So I want you to engage in this warfare tonight in obedience to the command of bold speaking. Bold speaking. What if it didn't happen? That's why it didn't happen. Because we won't say it boldly. 1979, going through the material of Kennedy again, seven keys to divine healing. I just saw Matthew 8 and verse 17 himself took my infirmity. I yelled, screamed, yay! I can never be sick. It will be 40 years next year. You say it boldly, God will back it up openly. Now, I didn't say it only in that room. Everywhere I went from that time on, people were angry, but I was happy. I have, I'm bailing myself out of the, the plague of sickness and disease. No apology. No apology. One of my sons in the Lord, medical doctor, he said he was very afraid for me. 
as I kept declaring it. He was afraid for me. That, there are too many virus in the world. <laughs> he was afraid for me. I've laid my hands on every dangerous, contagious disease. Because you don't bear human life anymore. So now you are a carrier of eternal life. The God kind of life eternally immune to sickness and disease. Now, what am I saying? Whatever you speak against sickness tonight will be confirmed instantly in your life. His blessings make it rich and add no sorrow. He has him blessed to keep giving money for sickness and disease. You can't be serving and be serving sickness at the same time. Now, in the name of Jesus, everybody under the siege of any sickness or disease, incurable, you have to live with it, you'll be on it forever. That plague, that siege is declared over tonight. Yeah. But you have to come out against it. You have to come out against it because life and death as terrific as death may pose, is in the power of the tongue. The greatest dread of humanity is death. Amen. But as terrible as death poses to be, is in command of your tongue. Proverbs 18, 21. Life and death are in the power of the tongue. Life and death are in the power of the tongue. Life and death. And the last enemy, the most stubborn, that will be defeated is death. First Corinthians 15, 26. The most stubborn that will be defeated is death. Oh, death, where is this thing? Oh, grave, where is thy victory? <laughs> Amen. Christ has abolished both. God has abolished both in Christ. Engaging your tongue in warfare based on your faith in the war. We hold death to ransom. Therefore, no one dies young in this church anymore. <laughs> Everyone under this apostolic umbrella will live into a good old age. <laughs> you will see your children, your grandchildren, your great grandchildren. Your great great grandchildren, you won't be carried to the toilet. Nobody will be bathing for you. At 100, you are still climbing the stair. Somebody believe that. Let me hear your loudest amen. Pastor Adela never stayed downstairs once, up, and never carried. Okay, oh, oh double. He never used walking stick. He left at 114. At 108, I said, what's happening? He said, I went to Ikare to dedicate a new church building. How? By road. By road. How many like that? Now, you won't have any less. <laughs> the of the grave is shattered tonight by the power of your tongue. No one dies young in your household again. Everyone appointed to death is rescued tonight. All powers of hell cannot withstand the power of our tongue. All. Oh. Because you use your tongue to get out of the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light. 
with the heart you believe, with your mouth confession is made, and then you are saved. You walk gallantly out of the dungeons of hell with your tongue. You can keep your life out of that region for life by engaging your tongue appropriately. When we speak boldly in faith, God goes all out to our defense. All out. Open your mouth wide and I will feel it. And I will subdue your enemies under you and turn my hand against your adversaries. Speak out. And my integrity will commit me to defend you. Speak out. Speak out. And so a closed mouth is a closed destiny in this kingdom. A closed mouth is a closed destiny. We had this interesting picture in Isaiah 53 and verse 7 and 8 concerning Jesus. He was oppressed, he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth because he was ordained to pay the price for our redemption. But when you open not your mouth, you are oppressed, you are afflicted. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter. And as a sheep before her sharers is dumb, so he opened not his mouth. The most anointed that walked the planet earth, because he would not open his mouth, the anointed could not deliver. He opened not his mouth. Now, verse 8. Now, he, verse 8. He was taken from prison and from judgment. Who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off out of the land of the living. For the generation of my people was he stricken. Now, so if you don't open your mouth, you'll be taken from prison, taken to judgment, tormented. Jesus was wounded for the transgression of his people. He had to pay that price, but showing us that with a closed mouth, you don't have a future. With a closed mouth, I don't have a future. You hear me say, one billion demons can't stand on my way. As they hear, they have to clear. Because God is eternally committed to confirm our bold speaking when our heart, and there will be no doubt in our heart, God had no choice but to confirm it. God spoke he was going to be the faith tabernacle in one year. But if he didn't speak, God can confirm it. If we didn't speak, God can confirm it. And we don't keep speaking, he won't confirm it. If you speak for a while and stop at a point, that's where it stops. But even when it was two months of the time, we're still dealing with the roof. And I said, God spoke to me this morning. It took me six days to create the word and the fullness thereof. I won't need two months to complete an ordinary building. Two months, too much. Everybody say with me, two months, too much. And we were screaming, two months, too much. We were screaming, two months, too much. Screaming, sh shamelessly. Shamelessly. The rain fell. I was drenched in the church with dedicating two months' time. Two months, too much. Two months. September 18 is a reality. Satan, if you like, be laughing. With your eyes open and your dead head, you see it. September 18, 1999 is a reality. You know, we stop talking. That's why it stopped happening. You have to keep at it. You have to keep at it. You have to keep at it. God told me this morning, I said, that it's time to get the aircraft. What? Where are you coming from? Coming from God. On the Saturday morning. Yes, if you give according to what you have, it's accepted. Not according to what you don't have. God has no need. He wants to meet your need. Now give. Never repeated. No reminder. In six months time, the plane landed. 1996, not 2012. Where our church was? Oh no. Because you are not ashamed to declare it, God cannot be ashamed to deliver it. 
every time you declare it boldly and in faith, God's integrity is committed to confirm it openly. Now, in the name of Jesus, this year shall be a year of open confirmations in your life. That's one great key to unleashing the wonders in the world. Assessing the world, injecting your faith in it, and making bold declarations for raw manifestations. Bold declarations for raw manifestations. Bold. With the confidence that the greater one is in you. That he cannot deny himself. That whatever he says in his word, that's what he will do. Heaven and earth may pass away, it's what we never pass away. You are making declarations based on your insight into the truth. Then you tie on with us sweat. That's the way it works. Nothing must go down in your life anymore. Amen. You never suffer a setback in your life anymore. Amen. Now we had this episode in 1 Samuel chapter 17 and verse 41. We saw Goliath, the big one, big and empty. And the Philistine came on and drew near unto David and the man that bare the shield went before him. And when the Philistine looked about and saw it was one tiny boy, he disdained him. Ah! Remember Jeremy? For he was but a youth and ruddy and of a fair countenance. And the Philistine said to David, Am I a dog? That thou comest to me with staves. And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. The Philistine said, Come to me, and I will give thy flesh unto the first of the air and to the beasts of the field. Then said David, You know, you are not saying something. That's why the enemy keeps saying things against you. Amen. Your mouth is shut. That's why it's dominating you. Then David said, Thou comest to me with a sword and with a spear and with a shield. But I come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast defied. Now hear what he said. This day will the Lord deliver thee into my hand, and I will smite thee and take thy head from thee. I will give the carcass of the host of the Philistines this day unto the fowls of the air and to the beasts of the Ah, that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. It's a battle of words. Don't let the enemy have the final say. David cursed Goliath back by his own God, the living God, the God of the armies of Israel. And as the Philistine began to go towards David, David ran and put his hand in his pocket, took one of the stones that he has gathered and flung it. And God confirmed it into the forehead of Goliath. He fell down dead and the host of Philistines fled. Israel pursued them. They fell like overripe roots on the floor and the boss of the air came to it. God confirmed what David boldly declared. Anything you boldly declare, no matter how huge it has been posing to be against your life, you boldly declare clear it and God will openly confirm it. Amen. Let me hear your loudest amen. amen. Let me hear your loudest amen. amen. Engaging the bold speaking commandment to command the supernatural at will. The supernatural at will. Yeah! I can never be poor. March 
1982. And I've not stopped saying so. Now, I have never begged since the day I said it. I mean, the intoxicating revelation of the world spawned that loud speaking. I haven't stopped it. Sir, I have never begged. I have never begged and I've never borrowed. You got the word. But it has no answer because your mouth is closed. It's time to go there. I'm serving you. I cannot be serving sickness for it is written thou shalt serve the Lord thy God and it shall take sickness away from your life. Enough! Enough! Then you face that mountain. Mountain, listen. I have the authority of Jesus to have the final say over you. Get thee out of my body now. Amen. Bold speaking. Bold actions. Bold steps. I had an experience many years ago. I had this runny nose that seemed to pursue me. And I concluded it must be because of the dusty road. You know, most of the roads were not tired. And then uh, I said, if Jesus were on this road, will his nose be running about? I said, no. My God, I sold off. To nature explanation, to satanic affliction. I sold off. So when I was going somewhere to minister, I told the anchor chief, I said in my heart, if this thing flows to my mouth, I won't touch it, Jesus. I, I won't. I bet you I won't. So I threw the anchor chief away. The nose dried 1979 till tomorrow. Till my time on that is over. Dried there and dead. Your confidence in God holds your future. Holds your future. That Jesus can't be running us no matter how dusty the road. If they carry all the dust to his nose, it won't run. No. This is the devil's affliction. I say no. 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 Somebody's here. It's time to work out your own salvation. And through confession, we assess salvation. Work out your own rescue by engaging your mouth according to the rules. Speaking boldly in the Lord. Not casting away your confidence as a great recompense of reward. But speaking boldly in the Lord. And then you have it. Let me hear your loudest. Amen. amen. This is your night. Business, you are ordered to prosper because I serve the Lord. If they will obey and serve him, they shall spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasure. pleasure. You are not permitted to stand still. No. I belong to the ever-winning breakthrough family of Jesus. Say with me, the answer is in my tongue. Say it loud. Now I know it. Now I know it. He said, no weapon that is formed against you, what? Shall prosper. But every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment, thou shall condemn. Not me. No, you. You. No. No. No, you won't let me go. You go down for me today. This night, this night, wherever you are. There are people in the body of Christ and I'm happy to be one of them. You don't touch them and go free. No, no. You don't touch them because they are spontaneous reactors. No, no, what's happening there? Now, I command, not right now, that gang up is shattered, is scattered and everyone involved be tormented. Be plagued. Because I will plague his foes before his face. I mean, I will, I'll plague all them that hate him. It's in the war. It's in the war. I've always prayed, no one 
launches an attack against me and survive. No one. No one. No one. No one. Somebody paid the price for me to live a victorious life. You can't mess up that price. It's an irreversible price. It's an irreversible. Whatever is born of God is ordained to overcome the world. And overcomes by faith. Now I believe him. So you can't overcome me. Satan, you and your cohorts can't overcome me. You cannot overcome me. Praise God. How many are said tonight? Enough is enough. It's your breakthrough night. He said, did you not so good see it in my feet? How is he grown here? I said, an enemy has done this. Every planting of the enemy against your destiny, every planting of the enemy against the destiny of your children, every planting of the enemy against your household, tonight, I declare them destroyed. Yeah. How many will say a loud amen to that? Yeah. I declare them destroyed tonight in the name of Jesus. Yeah. What well, the good news is this. Tonight marks the end of your ordeal with sickness and disease. Tonight marks the end of every form of feebleness and weakness in your body. Now, the good news is that tonight marks the end of all satanic afflictions and oppressions in your sleep. All afflictions of the wicked on your spouse. Whatever God has not planted as growing in your life is rooted out tonight. Somebody believe that. Let me hear your loudest amen. Let me hear your loudest amen. Lift up your right hand where you are seated and celebrate Jesus. Thank you for the gift of the tongue. Thank you for teaching my hands to war and my fingers to fight tonight. Thank you for showing me the highway to my victory. And triumph in life. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. In the name of Jesus, we have prayed. Now, let me show you this before we go on and serve the communion. If thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord your God and observe to do all his commandments, which I, Moses, his prophet, command thee this day, that the law will set thee above all nations of the earth. So, God's prophets are chapter openers. God speaks to them to speak to his people so as to open the next chapter in their life. This is a highly prophetic family. There is no cajoling of anybody. But here is the word of the Lord for the hour. Go take your territory for me. And generation yet unborn will not miss your footprints. Go take your territory for me. And wherever the soul of a fish has set upon, I will give it to you. Go take your territory for me. Go Take your territory for me. This is how this short man has come along. Go take your territories for me. And wherever the soul of your fish are tread upon, I will give it to you in your business, in your career, in your vocation. Go first. Make for me first and I'll make your own next. Make for me first and I'll make your own next. Make for me first and I'll make your own next. You won't make for me. Your own is not in view. Go make for me first. And I'll make your own next. I got some humorous thing the other time. They said 100 most reputable people on the earth. On the, whether by error or by default, it doesn't matter. But they got my name in there. Amen. And humorously, by whatever arrangement, they line me up after Billy Graham. Go take your territory for me. And I will give you your territory next. 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 Who oh, dash monkey banana? Obedience. Obedience. God says it. You jump into it. Not minding yourself. Obedience brought us here. Can I land? Obedience brought us here. It's not normal. It's not palpable. It's not something you want. It's not something anybody wants. It's contrary to all church growth principles in the world. But God said, this is the place. Okay, that's the place. 
What if they don't come? God, who said it will be here? Uh, two of us will be there together. No matter who didn't come, sir, I'll be here. No matter who didn't come, I'll be here. No matter who felt I was mad, I'll be here. Because madness brought me to where I am. Can I tell you something? You are going places. Don't toy with this. God told me your crown is in this operation. What did I say? So no matter your vocation, he's asking me to tell you, do the work of an evangelist. Second Timothy chapter 4 verse 5. But what thou in all things? Endure afflictions. Do the work of an evangelist. Make a full proof of your adventure in life. Um, Paul said in that chapter, verse 8, he said, henceforth, a crown is laid up for me. Doing this work of taking attention for Christ gets us a crown ahead of us. Your crown is in this thing. Your crown is in this thing. Engage the secret of prayer. Engage passionate approach to souls. Make passionate and compelling invitations. Get on key with God. It will open your destiny. Get on key with God and it will open up your destiny. For they that be wise, and he that winning souls is wise, shall shine as the brightness of the firmament. And they that turn many, not attempt to turn, they that turn many, righteousness, as the stars forever and ever. As the stars forever and ever. You won't believe all our converse of last year to this time that have not gone to Bible school. They all lined up. All lined up with their names on there. And I said, young people, my heart is after you. Old and young, they are there. Coming into this school. That is how to lay hold on your crown. He said, therefore, lay fast hold on what you have. Let another man take thy crown. Your crown won't go to another man. Amen. Behold, I come quickly. Hold that fast with our hearts, lest that, that no man take it thy crown. Just lay fast hold on every instruction. Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 13. He said, take fast hold of instructions. <laughs> Let her not go. Keep her for she is thy life. Prophetic instruction secures the future. Take fast hold of instructions. Keep her. Let her not go for she is thy life. How much we align with instructions that come our way is what determines the quality of the future that awaits us. The good news is this, your struggle is over. Amen. I say your struggle is over. Amen. Your struggle is over. Amen. This Sunday nobody comes empty. Nobody comes to church empty to be an act of dishonor. No, this is on. Nobody comes empty. You pray, Lord, anybody I invite, anoint my tongue to make it an irresistible invitation and turn such individuals in. If you want four, then invite eight. So that I said in the morning, we don't know that hand in the evening. You don't know either we prosper, either one or these or both of them. You want eight people? Now, reach out to ten. Pray, not just invitation as if I invite somebody for a bad day. Passionate, so dying invitation. Passionate. I met some two uh, very uh, 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 dedicated Muslims. I was driving back from my outreach and I saw those two young people on the road. I parked. And I said, hello. Hey, Papa, Papa. God bless you. I said, yes. Jesus loves you. You must be in church tomorrow. He said, we are dedicated Muslims. I said, that's why I called you. That's why. The following Sunday, they were here. I've not checked on their names recently, but they've been there. They were, at, we had finished outreach. I saw them and said, we had these people going at this time. It was about 7.30 there about. I packed. I said, call them. They showed up by themselves. Their dedication was over. Amen. 
by a passionate. I just couldn't pass them driving home. Anybody you invite for next Sunday service will not only appear, it will abide. Yeah. And every trace of shame around anything that has to do with you, your work, your health, your children, anything that connotes shame, you see them no more again forever. Yeah. Either to you have not asked me anything because I've been asking ambiguous things. I mean, there's no definition. Ask me definitely. Let the prayer I'm praying today locate two other people and draft them in. So you, that is one you invite. That is one that your prayer draft. Engage the two sides and watch how God honors you in return. Give the Lord a big hand of praise. <laughs> Very quickly tonight before we serve the communion, you are here in this service and you are not born again. That's where life begins. Except a man is born again, he cannot taste, he cannot experience the blessings of the kingdom of God. You want to be part of the blessing of this hour? You want to experience a new dawn in your life? You want to spend eternity with Christ after a triumphant adventure on earth? You want your sins forgiven? You want to become a new creature? We are all things we pass away and all things we become new. Wherever you are, please stand to your feet and I'll pray with you. God bless you. Stand to your feet tonight. You want to surrender your life to Christ, please stand. God bless you. God bless you. Stand to your feet right now. You want to surrender your life to Christ, please stand to your feet. This is your chance for a change of story. Stand to your feet tonight. Jesus loves you and that for free. You, you can't pay for his love. Long before you came to light, he died for you. Stand to your feet wherever you are and remain standing place. Now, there are other people here tonight that need to rededicate their lives to Jesus. You want to rededicate your life to Jesus? Can I have you stand to your feet? Please stand. Amen. You want to stay there? Come back to Jesus. Please stand to your feet. Wherever you are, stand to your feet tonight. And I'll be praying for you both here in Canaan land and North Division centers across Lagos and Nota. Stand to your feet. This is your chance for a change of story. Stand to your feet tonight in the name of Jesus. Everybody standing, please come to the front right now and I'll pray with you. Everybody. And standing up. You can still join us wherever you are. Join us quickly tonight. You want to rededicate your life to Jesus and start your new life all over. Please come. Come right now. Jesus loves you. Somebody else is coming tonight. Wherever you are, come quickly. Come quickly. Come quickly. Jesus loves you. Come quickly. It's your turn for a change of story. It's your turn for a change of story. If you are coming, join us now. Join us quickly. Join us quickly. It's your turn for a change of story. Somebody else needs to get up. Wherever you are, get up right now and be on your way coming. Get up right now and be on your way coming. You have your own life to live. You don't have a spear. Keep coming. Keep coming. You don't have a spear. Don't mess up the only one you have. Keep coming. Somebody else is coming. Come quickly. Come quickly. In all the VN centers, approach the altar area right now. We are going to pray in a moment. And Jesus will turn your life around. Jesus will turn your life around. You have only one life to live. Don't let the enemy waste it for you. In Jesus' name. Now, everybody in front, please bow your heads. Now, lift up your right hand to heaven. And pray this prayer after me from the depth of your heart. Say after me, Lord Jesus, I surrender my life to you tonight. Forgive me all my sins. Wash me with your blood. I believe you died for me. On the third day you rose again that I may be justified right now. I believe my sins are now forgiven. I'm justified by your blood. I'm saved. I'm restored. I'm born again. I'm now a child of God. I am free from the power of sin to serve the living God. Lord Jesus, I proclaim you tonight as my Lord and my Savior forever. Amen. Keep your hands up as I pray. Father, I pray over these precious souls, both here at the youth chapel and all across our VN centers in Lagos and Otter. Jesus has brought you in by his grace. His grace shall keep you going. None of you shall falter. None of you shall fall on the way. You will make it true to the end in the name of Jesus. Now receive grace to live the overcomer's life. Receive grace to live the overcomer's life in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Praise the Lord.
Congratulations. Congratulations. Please walk this way with the officials. You fill out your card and then submit them all over the various, various centers. Please follow the officials and then we'll take record of your names and be praying for you and follow up with you. Shall we all rise?